So good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us in uh, and welcome. This we've not been. We, I don't think this is we've done a webinar uh, in a while uh, for the Applied Data Science and Machine Intelligence program uh, that we have launched. So uh, you know, I'm very excited today. We have uh, you know professors Ravindran and Professor Arun with us today, um, and they're going to be sharing some of their perspectives uh, on the program. So what we're going to do is I have a very small presentation. I, it's not even a presentation, but if you really look at it, uh, you know, my name is Arutra Bhattacharya. Uh, I head admissions for talent sprint programs that we run uh, with multiple organizations, uh, you know, and leading institutions like IIT Madras, for example. And uh, today I'm going to be in conversation with uh, both the professors and we're going to talk a little bit about the program. I have been given to understand that, you know, it's a mix of people who have already enrolled in the program as well as people who are considering enrolling in the program. So what we're going to do is that uh, we will have a set of questions. Uh, you know, these are some questions that we keep getting from uh, a lot of you who want to understand a little bit more about the program as well as we have, uh, you know, we are also going to be taking your questions in as a part of uh, the session. So I would request all of you to hold on to your questions. We will have a dedicated audience Q&A uh, towards the end of the session where we will try and answer questions that we have not been able to address um, as a part of the session. And um, so just hold on to that. Uh, the other thing is that if you really look at it, um, this is a set of programs. This is one amongst a series of programs that we have launched with uh, many leading uh, education institutions in India. And, uh, and this is the first program with IIT Madras uh, for us. So we are incredibly proud of that. You know, there's so many other programs that we run uh, with all of these institutions. So what I am going to do is, um, you know, I'm now going to just uh, stop the screen share for one and uh, we will get uh, a small introduction from both the professors who have uh, decided to join us. So uh, welcome, Professor Ravindran. Welcome, Professor Rajkumar. Uh, why don't we start with Professor Rajkumar? Uh, and, you know, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself um, to the people who have joined in um, and then we can go to Professor Ravindran. Uh, you are on mute. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay, thanks, uh, Aritro. Um, my name is uh, Arun Rajkumar. I'm an assistant professor in the uh, Department of Computer Science and Engineering at uh, IIT Madras. So I joined IIT Madras in 2019, and I've been here for a couple of years now. So before that, um, I did my uh, PhD uh, from Indian Institute of Science, uh, which was again in machine learning and artificial intelligence. Um, then I worked in the industry for a couple of years uh, with Xerox Research Labs Bangalore, um, where again, I looked at a lot of industry-related problems in transportation and healthcare, crime analytics, and so on, uh, before I moved to academics. So my areas of interest in research are in machine learning, um, uh, data mining, artificial intelligence, um, and in a broader sense, um, also the both the theoretical and practical aspects of it. So that's a short introduction. That should suffice. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Professor Rajkumar. So uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good evening, and hope all of you are keeping safe. I'm uh, Ravindran. I'm also a faculty in the computer science and engineering department at IID Madras. And I also head the Robert Bosch Center for Data Science and AI, uh, which is uh, an interdisciplinary AI center that has been in operation since uh, 2017. Right? And the, this particular program is uh, you know, going to be offered by faculty from the center. And uh, so I have been with IIT Madras since uh, 2004, and before that, I did my PhD at uh, uh, University of Massachusetts at Amherst, and uh, and then uh, before that, I had done my master's at Indian Institute of Science as well, right? And uh, so, my areas of interest are largely in uh, machine learning and AI, and more recently, I've started looking at uh, you know aspects of uh, you know how to get AI systems deployed in practice. And I do a lot of work uh, in collaboration with industry, 
right? So in fact, I recently finished a sabbatical at, at an industry and just came back. And so been not just looking at the theoretical aspects of AI and machine learning, but also looking at, you know, what would it take to deploy it and especially deploy things in an Indian context. There are so many unique challenges to, uh, you know, getting the AI, uh, machine learning systems work in India, right? So, to, so we really don't understand that uh, well. Right. So the industry doesn't have uh, mature researchers to look at it and the academia doesn't have enough of an industry to connect. And so we are trying to, at the center, we are trying to address that as well. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. So which which kind of gets me, you know, to the, the first question that is there and, you know, either of you can take a crack at this, um, you know, Robert Bosch Center um, uh, at IIT Madras. So what exactly does Robert Bosch Center do and what, Kind of why did we look at you know launching a program like this? What led to uh, this program being launched? Yeah, sure. Okay. So yeah, I think I think I should uh, take a crack at it, uh, given um, the head of the center. So the Robert Potts Center is actually an interdisciplinary AI center, one of the very few uh, uh, really uh, hardcore interdisciplinary centers in AI in, uh, in internationally, not just in India, right? So, uh, so we have people from uh, 10 different academic departments who are part of the center. Right? Uh, all, all the engineering disciplines and people from uh, management school, people from mathematics, people from even humanities are part of the center, right? And uh, so the idea here is that, uh, you know, there is a lot of fundamental research that is happening in AI, uh, but there are also a lot of issues that come when you look at, uh, you know, areas of AI cutting across all of these uh, uh, departments, all of these verticals, right? And then uh, the whole idea behind the center is to take advantage of synergies that arise when you look at problems cutting across verticals. So for example, uh, uh, our center has a lot of strength in looking at what is called network analytics, right? So you look at, uh, you know, connected entities, like it could be traffic flowing flowing in a, in a city, right? So you could think of that as a connected entity or people on social networks or people on a telecom network, right? So there are many, many domains in which these kinds of networks arise, right? So whether it is uh, like Facebook or whether it is traffic or whatever, right? And it turns out that when you start peeling away the, the you know, areas, right? And then get down into looking at what are the techniques at work. It's a similar kind of techniques work across the spectrum, right? So that is one of the things that we are leveraging from the center. So you asked us what we do at the center. We do both fundamental research as well as looking at uh, cutting edge applications of these, right? Therefore, in fact, I, I mean, I have a slide when I talk about the center, and then we have this one slide with like 40 different industrial collaborators that the center works with, right? And, and, then, uh, and, and then we have another slide that looks at all the international academic collaboration that we have, and that spans also almost a good fraction of the globe. So both on the uh, theoretical side, as well as the, uh, as the more, uh, you know, applied side, right? So the center does a lot of work on that. And that, the whole, whole idea is to keep straddling this right, as we go along. So Arun, you want to add something? Yeah, so, and I think that is one of the main reasons why a program like this from such a center makes a lot of sense, right? So because the faculty in the center have varied experience in different industrial uh, domains. I mean, uh, they work with a lot of industry partners and so on. And so they understand the challenges that somebody who's in the industry would actually you know, face uh, from machine learning context. And, and we, we thought that we can have a program which can fine tune, um, you know, as opposed to several other programs, we can come up with a program with a, with a, with a I mean, not just machine learning, but then with an industry focus, right? So, and I think RBC DISA is a great place to have such a program. Absolutely, which kind of, uh, you know, gets me, it's, it's a very interesting set of, I don't know how many people in the audience have, uh, you know, visited uh, the Robert Bosch Center website uh, of IIT Madras, but, you know, there are great set of companies that, you know, you're working with. So, just, just for the interest of everybody, you know, who's joining in, I would want you to kind of talk a little bit, Professor Ravindran, about uh, the kind of companies that you're working with, the kind of collaborations, uh, you know, that, that or, or any interesting use cases or areas where, you know, you're working, which, which would, I'm sure, you know, what you're doing over there would kind of flow into uh, a program like this as well. 
so so can we can we just have some idea of the kind of you know companies that we are working with because you know like the name says this is an applied data science uh, and a machine intelligence program so i'm sure people are very interested in knowing about the work that's going on so yeah the so one thing which i wanted to point out as part of the previous answer can i finish that and then get to you Absolutely. get to this one so if you actually look at the faculty who are teaching this course right you'll be very surprised to find out that it's just not computer science right so there are people from civil engineering there are people from mechanical engineering there are people from the design department there are people from uh, you know biotechnology all the people are coming together and so not only are these people you know knowledgeable in ai but knowledgeable in applying ai to very specific uh, um yeah um, uh, so somebody is asking question we, we for the time being okay, prefer- okay we'll, we'll ignore the questions okay fine fine, fine. So we'll ignore right. the questions. okay great so uh so 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 that's the point i wanted to make right? not just that it's not just computer science people are not talking about other applications it's people from those domains who are going to talk about how to use ai ideas and machine learning ideas in their domains as well so so, so that's Absolutely. one thing i want to point out uh, everybody is all the faculty of the program are iit madras faculty uh, the faculty of the program are iit madras yeah except for the bridge module where uh, you know talent sprint will be taking care of which will be the foundational stuff everybody you will be taught by um, faculty from iit madras sure so arithu can i share one slide absolutely the one that i was telling you that i use when i talk right absolutely yeah this is with, with, a, with a lot of companies thrown in there <laughs> and so you are asking me what are the companies you work with it's across the gamut right so you can see that there are many indian companies as well and there are also a lot of multinationals right so uh, so this so we work across the board right so we, the, some of the verticals maybe i can mention that right uh, some of the verticals that we work in and are you know in manufacturing analytics right so we look at uh, you know uh, looking at uh, traditional first principle models that people use for modeling large scale uh, systems and also look at how to improve those with uh, data driven ap- applications right we do a lot of work in the fintech space right looking at things like credit scoring customer behavior modeling like risk prediction and all that right so we work in uh, systems biology and healthcare with a lot of uh, various both non governmental bodies as well as uh, companies right and then uh, we do a lot of work in the, the smart mobility space and also looking at things like uh, water distribution power grids and as well as pollution modeling and so on and so forth in the smart city space right? so these are the various verticals we look at so you can look at uh, across the board like so there are people like applied materials uh, dapsol and the ge where we work with them and ashok leland where we were doing do projects on uh, uh, you know uh, uh, smart manufacturing and manufacturing analytics and so on and so forth uh, saint gobain kelet and cor all these companies are in that space and then there are uh, 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 you know labs right like jackson labs and uh, the and then the genome india uh, uh, the 10k india initiative and a variety of these kind of non profit organizations with whom we work on you know the both the, the system biology and as well as the healthcare modeling right and then uh, there are people like society general who work with us on and also dwara trust yeah uh, who do a lot of work with us on uh, uh, the fintech side of things and it says indian railways here but we are actually working with the railway hospital right in terms of looking at some healthcare solutions and there are multiple uh, players in that space right where well, we can be work with healthcare in fact one of the things that we do is we work with the onoy ambulance emergency response service in uh, chennai and helping them improve uh, their uh, response time their deployment of resources and these are projects that are actually uh, going to be implemented deployed, deployed on on the ground right i mean i can just go on but they're just as you can see uh, our collaborators span uh, industry verticals also span sectors and span government bodies and uh, all ngos not for profit as well as uh, multinationals and indian companies if i may ask you this one very interesting name northwestern university um, sure. so what's what's the collaboration with uh, so the Brian? reason the reason northwestern appears here and not among our Indi- uh, academic collaborators i mean our academic collaborator list is large right i mean So not person appears here mainly because they have us contracted as an external researcher. Okay. Right. So there are certain projects in Northwestern for which they need a particular expertise, which they are contracted to us. So the relationship with Northwestern is is a, a kind of an industrial relationship. But the Northwestern is not the only university we collaborate with. Right? So we work with uh, 
I mean, across the board, right? We work with, we do a lot of work with Purdue, Ohio State, Northwestern, UT Dallas, uh, Mila, and uh, many collaborators in Europe, right? So, so yeah. So if you look at my yeah, this is what I was telling you the, uh, the thing, right? So Japan, Australia, and Singapore, a lot of European countries, uh, Canada and US, so many collaborators around the globe. So these are all academic collaborators. Excellent. Um, and, and a follow-up question here. So is it is it safe to say that, you know, uh, aspects of all these collaborations, what we are working in, uh, flow into the curriculum of the program? Uh, see, the, the, the curriculum is in two parts. I don't know, maybe I should let Arun answer this, but like just give my take on it and then he can explain on it. The curriculum is really in two parts, right? So that is the fundamentals of ML, right? The fundamentals of machine intelligence, fundamentals of uh, uh, data science, right? That that is, you know, that so we give a very, done. very strong, uh, okay, yeah. So the the, the first uh, two parts, right? One, two, and four, right? One, two, four, and six, basically, are, are the fundamentals of research, right? So, so some of it is very basic foundational things, right? But then three and five is where we really are bringing in a lot of our collaborations and, you know, adding value to this program by looking at our interactions with the industry. And uh, so one, two, four, and six, which are the more of the, the foundational aspects of the course, uh, again, draw from all our extraordinary and, and, uh, teaching experience, as well as our research experience. So I, mean, I don't need to expand on that. Yeah, perfect, right? So as, as uh, Mr. Ravi mentioned, right? So you have one, two, and uh, four, and six, which are foundational, and three and six are where uh, uh, we will bring in industry collaborators. And the idea is that depending on the cohort and you know, the type of uh, interest that the cohort in general has, uh, we can go back and ask the corresponding uh, industry folks to come and give, I mean, some use case studies as well, right? So for instance, if predominantly a set of people in a cohort are interested in, let's say manufacturing type of analytics or smart cities type of analytics, then, I mean, as you saw there, are RBC DSI has a long list of collaborators and we can always bring in expertise from that field as well. Right? So of course, there are faculty here who are also uh, collaborating with them who will also be talking about uh, um, these real world use cases. In addition to that, we'll also have some industry collaborators also who will be giving some of the um, sessions. Right. So in that sense, this is unique in the sense that uh, we can kind of also tailor make it to whatever extent possible to the cohort in terms of the uh, industry, uh, industry level use cases. Oh, very interesting. And just for everybody's, uh, you know, understanding, we, we've, we've got, we were, you know, we have um, filled in about most of the seats that we would want to fill in for the first cohort. And uh, I believe we have people from about 11 to 12 odd industries. Um, currently, we still have some seats that are available. Um, and it's, it's a pretty interesting mix. I was looking at some um, high level data. I think the average years of experience is somewhere about eight, eight and a half years now. Uh, and uh, while initially we had started off with the program with the idea that, you know, we want to restrict it uh, to about five years, but then we got uh, humongous interest from people who have more than five years of experience. It's probably because, you know, it's, it's coming from, uh, you know, IIT Madras and Robert Bosch Center uh, in, in uh, you know, more specifically. So, so what we have done is, and one of the questions that we've all been receiving uh, is, you know, uh, people want to understand a little bit in depth into what we plan to cover in the curriculum. So, one of the things that we are doing is that, yes, uh, you know, we will have a very interesting or a very diverse um, set of people who will be joining in. So in that context, professors, maybe, you know, Professor Arun, you may want to do that. Can we just delve a little deep into, uh, you know, all these six aspects of the curriculum uh, and, and just talk a little bit about what people can expect, uh, you know, the kind of uh, rigor that we are planning to you know, have as a part of the program. Uh, so what are they signing up for? Sure. So let me go over these uh, six modules one by one and then give a brief uh, peek into each of these. Uh, so the first module, as you see, is foundations of data science. So, you know, uh, data science has, as, as, a, as a field uh, relies on a lot of uh, fundamental mathematical ideas. And uh, we understand that people who join the program may not be um, abreast with a lot of these. So the goal here is to make sure that we get, get you to a level, foundational level, where you can then later on, you know, understand all the algorithms of machine learning and so on, which is um, 
the second module where what we will do is uh, we will look at the uh, the basic paradigms of machine learning things like uh, supervised learning unsupervised learning and several other paradigms which are fundamental to several machine learning problems um, and we will see several algorithms a state of the art algorithms algorithms that people use in the industry all the time uh, but then the second module would focus on the algorithmic aspects of it takes right? so the more foundational aspects of it um, we are not going to think about um, uh, the industry level challenges in module two right so we'll first introduce what are the algorithms themselves in uh, module two and once you go to module three then we take up a real world use case and now the moment you go into the real world use case things are going to be entirely different right so you need to think about a lot more things while you actually take this algorithm and deploy it in an industry level setup right so the pipeline is entirely different right so the algorithm just fits into one part of the entire machine learning pipeline in an industry level setup right so you have the data collection part of it you need to understand um, data pre processing and then uh, see what other possible challenges might uh, might appear depending on the specific uh, use case that you look at and what we plan to do here is um also have a mix of uh, industry uh, uh, level seminars uh, use case discussions um and also you know uh, join discussions i mean people can form groups and then try to understand a particular take up one particular use case and try to well deep into it uh, depending on the cohort and the interest about um, which problem you want to look at and so on so that would be uh, module 3 now module 4 is interesting because module 2 talks about the classic machine learning algorithms um whereas in today's world what has happened in the last maybe uh, 10 years or so is that there has been um, i mean uh, a sweep in machine learning community where deep learning has taken over machine learning so to say um, so deep learning is a subset of machine learning um, it's a type of um, um uh, it's a type of it's a paradigm it's a it's a different way of looking at uh, machine learning problems and um, most of the successful um, you know big data algorithms today are uh, deep learning based and um, because this is an applied data science program it is important to understand the foundations of deep learning as well and that's what we will do in uh, uh, module 4 so again with deep learning A new set of challenges appear right so which which are not really associated with the traditional machine learning type of uh, use cases so deep learning means big data big data means you have challenges of scale you have challenges with respect to training and so on right so so now we look at some real world challenges with respect to deep learning in uh, in, in module 5 uh, with respect to applications to vision applications to uh, natural language processing and perhaps speech and other things as well so that would be uh, module 5 and what we would do in module 6 is well all this is fine uh, so where you have a bunch of data and then you want to do some kind of machine learning over this data you can use classical algorithms you can use deep learning based algorithms all that is fine um, but what might happen in a real world scenario where you really want to deploy these algorithms is that um, you are not going to be i mean there are several scenarios where you won't see that all the data together right so data is going to appear one at a time um and and then you would want to you know uh, learn over time in an online fashion right so the, which is what is called a sequential learning which is something that is not always covered in a machine learning course though i think it's very fundamental and it should be and that's why we put that here so um it has its own associated challenges how do you learn over time right so i mean um so uh, let's think of this as um, as a machine learning application in your phone right so depending on how you interact with the phone it's going to keep it's the application is going to learn um, as you interact with the phone for instance right so which means that that knowledge of learning in a sequential fashion has to be built into the system and that is what we will look at uh, um module 6 and i think what is also there after module 6 is the capstone project perhaps that is not listed here which is where all of these things will culminate right so you have a project where you have to use the participants would be uh, using all the knowledge that they've gained over these six modules and then build from scratch uh, some system uh, keeping in mind all the potential industry level challenges that might occur so that at the end of uh, that they have built from scratch some machine learning system which is workable which can well at least in a prototypical way be uh, is is industry ready absolutely uh, yeah so the capstone part yeah we didn't cover and also uh, the the pre learning modules that is there which we are going to you know give access to people we have the orientation 
uh, from the on the 25th of uh, this month and then you will have a couple of weeks of access to pre-learning materials and then uh, you know you will the the classes or the preparatory modules the bridge module as we like to call it will start uh, so we'll we'll cover that as well i thought you know we just wanted to focus on the main part of the curriculum um, and thank you so much for uh, you know the the nice uh, detailed explanation that's there uh, so if I really look at it, uh, and we get this question a lot in terms of, uh, you know, machine intelligence. So what is machine intelligence? We, I am sure a lot of people would have asked us this question, you know, why is it, what is machine intelligence? Why do we call it machine intelligence and not machine learning as a part of that? Uh, any of you want to take a crack at that and help us out with, uh, you know, clarifying that? Yeah, maybe I can... Uh... <laughs> maybe we can start so machine intelligence i mean basically the the so philosophically the holy grail of uh, man has to be i mean try to build in some sense a computer that will mimic the human brain right so and uh, uh, so people have been trying to think about this for like decades now and um, what what we mean by this broad term machine intelligence is you know, somehow try to mimic aspects of the human brain, right? So uh, with respect to either the visual part of it, with respect to the speech part of it, with respect to the text part of it, these are things that human beings have learned inherently. I mean, they, this is what we mean by, in some sense, intelligence, right? So you look at a tree and then you recognize that this is a tree, right? So that is, in some sense, um, intelligence. And now how can you make your computers work, right? So the easiest of things for human beings become so tough for the computers to learn, right? So, and, and so it needs, you know, to incorporate intelligence into the machine is going to uh, need a lot of thought and so on. And this broad area of machine intelligence thinks uh, and comes up with, you know, algorithms where, where the machine learns from experience how to, you know, act intelligently, so to say, right? So at a broad level, that would be, of course, there are details. But... Absolutely. Thank you so much. So, we will also talk a little bit about, you know, I, I see a lot of questions which are already coming in, but if you really look at, uh, you know, the, the market is flush with, uh, you know, programs on data science, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, how do you, in your words, as the creators of the program, uh, how would you say that this program is different from, um, you know, other programs that are available in the market? So uh, yeah, sure. Uh, let me take a crack. We, uh, we actually have touched upon various aspects of it already, right? You tell me which other AI or machine learning or machine intelligence program out there has so many people from the domain ex with domain expertise teaching the course, right? So the first thing is our focus is on not just giving you the fundamentals, not just saying, okay, here is a Python library and you can run it on this data set with 100 ele elements and then you're done, right? So our focus is not to, you know, give you a certificate on paper. Our focus is to make sure that when you finish this program, you're able to solve real problems. And that is why there are so much, uh, so, you know, emphasis on, and if you look at the hourly split up also, you'll see that there's a significant amount of hours that are spent on use cases in this program, as opposed to many of the other programs that are out there. And I think that is a uh, significant differentiator of this. Right? So the focus on you know applied, I mean, so being able to build applications out of these algorithms, these concepts that you learn, right? So not leave it at the conceptual level. Absolutely. I don't you want to add something to that? I mean, yeah. So I think uh, as uh, Sir Ravi mentioned, right? So we touched upon a lot of things. Why this program is kind of different from a lot of programs is. Is, is because of the you know the the industry focused uh, uh, focus of the program itself, and also because of the you know so the uniqueness of Robert Bosch Center itself, right? So in the sense that this is a center, I mean one of a kind center in the country where so many faculty from varied um, you know domain expertise uh, participate in, in a program like this, right? So um, I mean, uh, I would have liked to have a program <laughs> to have learned from a program like this when I uh, started machine learning, right? So, uh, in the sense that you get so much perspective when you when you listen to people who have worked in that particular area, right? So, I mean, for instance, I I have not worked in like for instance a biology based application or or a or a smart city based application, but then. Um, I mean, I might come and teach a class, but then that's not going to be so useful as opposed to somebody who has done 
research who has worked in these areas and uh, coming and giving their perspective about uh, what might be the problems in such a such a domain right and this is something unique that this program offers which i think um, not so many other programs offer absolutely today. yeah so one other thing which you know which we, we you kind of spoke about it uh, you know when we were starting the webinar you, you said that you know we are going to customize or depending on what the class wants uh, you know we will have industry mentors coming in and talking uh, about what's happening in the industry in terms of that so i think that's also something which is very unique uh, wherein uh, the content of the course is kind of going to be customized a little bit if i'm not uh, you know promising too much uh, in terms of what the class wants so so that's that's something which is very unique about it as well um, and we've been talking about faculty so you know you are two of you will be teaching the program definitely uh, i believe there are a couple of three two or three other faculty also will be teaching the program correct in fact more than that right so there are so in addition to me and professor ravi so there are uh, uh, at least six more faculty will be teaching this program um so right from so should i go over the names i mean do you want yes, to yes we can talk a little bit about that i mean the more people know about it the better sure um so uh, professor nandan sudarshanam who is from the um, uh, management science department who looks at a lot of uh, uh, experimental design applied statistics machine learning so he would be also be part of this um uh, professor kartik raman who is uh, who works on biological networks healthcare and uh, problems related to that so he would give his perspective on um, uh, computational systems biology healthcare how machine learning can be applied to healthcare also dr himanshu uh, sinha um dr nirav but uh, who is again uh, so biological engineering uh, faculty so he will also be giving his own perspective in this course uh, we have dr geeta krishnan uh, ramadurai uh, so who works a lot on uh, you know traffic modeling transportation networks and so on uh, pedestrian safety and things like that so he would be also giving us perspective about smart cities and things like that um, we also have uh, uh, professor balaji srinivasan uh, professor ganapati subramanian uh, professor mitesh kapra uh, who are who are all leading researchers in deep learning so they will also be giving us um, uh, they'll they'll take us through the deep learning part right which um, for instance uh, so professor uh, ganapati works on vision part of uh, deep learning a lot um, professor mitesh works on the text part of the deep learning a lot and uh, i mean we have a mix of people who can who are experts in different uh, domains in machine learning and uh, I mean, all of them are coming together for this course Oh, that's that's a very you know unique set uh, of people uh, with great competence uh, professor ravi uh, you you wanted to add something to that no 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 that's, that's a good list so i just wanted to say that ganapati is from the engineering design department so that's one department you forgot to mention so balaji is from mechanical engineering ganapati is from engineering design that's right right so uh, also as a part of you know your interaction with the industry you know i know you you advise a lot of uh, you know companies etc in terms of uh, their ai strategies etc if i can make you know, put that as a broad uh, thing of what you do so what is it that the industry is looking at especially when it comes to young talent i know a lot of the audience over here will be you know people who are probably stepping into their careers they would have spent about a couple of years etc broadly you know what do you think uh, this audience should be focusing on in terms of competence be it technical competence or be it uh, some other competence that they should be looking at to be valuable uh in the job market so to speak um uh, and before professor asks this question we'll start looking at the q and a section also uh of the webinar you know we we have about 20 25 15 20 more minutes to do that so you can start sending your questions whatever has come we'll start answering that as well and i believe you know this is one of the biggest questions that is there uh, is you know how will this program help me uh, become uh, more you know more wanted in the industry so to speak not for a negative connotation though i mean i can talk about it but you have a person who actually was in the industry hiring people for a few years maybe you should ask him first what is it that he would look for if he is hiring somebody for the doctor research in the ai background yeah so what <laughs> okay so what i would look for right so um so so not i mean today's world right people call 
this uh, data scientist, I mean, that's a term that has been abused a lot, right? So anybody who says it's a data scientist um, doesn't really understand the science behind data, I would think, right? So not, so in the sense that what people typically um, know is just a black box understand, they have a black box understanding of data science, right? So, I mean, knowing the Python libraries where to run what is not really, does not really make one equipped uh, as a data scientist. Um, what we want to do uh, in this program is to, you know, if you want to become a data scientist tomorrow, right? So you really have to understand what goes inside this black box. And the reason why you need to understand this is, so as, as in my experience in the industry, Right, so the the problems that one typically faces in the industry, you don't, you cannot. I mean, it's very un, uncommon that you can take an off-the-shelf classifier or off-the-shelf algorithm and directly apply it. Right, so that that typically doesn't work that well. So what you need to understand is, you know, unless you know the mechanics of how things work, right. So it is very hard for you to, you know, custom make these things for the industrial application that you have at hand. And to do that, you need to really understand these algorithms from a fundamental level. So if I am I am hiring somebody for a data scientist position, for example, right? So a data engineer position, I would really expect them to understand the fundamentals of these algorithms and be and also have the capability to apply this in a situation um, which is not the standard textbook situation, right? So and this this I mean the goal of this uh, you know uh, the course and so to say is uh, to make you ready for that. Right. So that that is what I would say. Yeah, Ravi, if you want to add something. Yeah. So I, let me add a little bit to it. So what uh, Arun said about uh, the the term data scientist being abused, right? This is very very uh, on on the on the dark, right? So uh, at least when this whole hype started a couple of years back, I mean, if you knew how to run macros on a spreadsheet, you were considered a data scientist, right? So there are people were actually. You know, are you happy to give you a job and uh, wait for you to produce some magic and things like that? But now the field has evolved. I mean, I'm looking at it from a slightly larger perspective. Uh, the the industry has evolved. Now people kind of understand what is it that you need to uh, you know to have somebody who is uh, valuable as a data scientist in the long run, right? And uh, the fact that uh, just being a tool user is qualifies you for a data scientist is kind of getting stretched. Right, so that's no longer the case, right? So people are really asking, uh, you know, really trying to know whether you can feel behind the tool and know, understand what is happening. Because the tools are changing, tools are developing at a very, very rapid rate, right? So what you're good at today might not be the tool of choice for next year, right? So, um, so people really, really, you really need to understand why are you doing something a particular way. We are not going to tell you how to develop new algorithms. Right? That is not the goal of this course. I'm not here to make you a researcher, right? I mean, I'm I'm doing that with the guys who are, are you know going through my PhD program and my research programs. I'm, I'm my goal there is to make them into researcher. The way we train them is very different. So what we are looking for is to say tell you, okay, here are some of the standard algorithms that people use, and this is how you would use it. You know, what are the knobs that you have to turn, and what are the places it can break? How would you fix it? Right, and, and and where would you go for the next level of learning? Right, so these are the things that we really like to keep you with. And what people are now looking for in the industry also is that, right? Not just you know, do you know your data structure? I mean, people like, just not just a coding challenge, right? So they ask you questions on, you know, you know, can you do this? Can you do that? When will this break? And I'll give you an unconventional situation, right? So that is a large class imbalance. How would you solve this problem? And things like that. That's, that's how, see, the perfection is called the textbook example, right? Because it never exists, right? So, so, Absolutely. so, so we, we, have to, we have to train you for the real world, and that's what we will do. Absolutely. And I, I think, yeah, both the observations on the data science thing is on the money. I'm sure uh, of all the SOPs that have been sent, I'm sure every SOP would have had that I want to become a data scientist for this program. I can pretty much bet on it that that's something that we would have seen. Uh, so that's excellent. So we'll, we'll look at um, some of the questions, uh, you know, that uh, the audience has been sending in. Uh, and while we do that, uh, professors, I'll go through the set of questions, you know, I'll answer them if I can. And then, you know, questions, uh, there are some certain specific questions where, you know, your answers would be much valuable than mine. So we'll do that. At the same time, what I'm doing is I'm also sharing uh, in case you need more information about uh, 
you know, getting into the program, etc. The seats that are there, you can contact Harika. The number is given there, or you can email us um, at uh, iitmadras.adsmi@talentsprint.com. Uh, we will be happy to help you. Uh, one other thing that I would like to say is that as a part of this program, all communication will be through Talent Sprint. Uh, you will not be getting communication from IIT Madras. So that's something that. Uh, we would like to say this is a program. Your certification will be from the Robert Bosch Center uh, of um, Data Science and Artificial Intelligence, uh, and which is a part of the IIT Madras. Uh, but uh, the, the and you will be taught obviously by the faculty who are all from IIT Madras except for the bridge module. Uh, there will be no communication that comes uh, from IIT Madras for you. Neither will the placements part of the program, and I'm going to talk about that as well, uh, will be covered. Will IIT Madras will have nothing to do with your placements, etc. Neither will you be an alumni of IIT Madras, so to speak. Uh, professors, you can, uh, you know, uh, I hope I, uh, what I'm conveying is uh, correct. Yeah, it is. It is. Right. Thank you. So let's look at this. This is a question from AK, and I think uh, you know Professor Arun can answer this probably. Is it possible to get government jobs in the data science field? Uh, Professor uh, you know, Rajkumar mentioned about crime analytics. Well, crime analytics is not only something to do with the, the government, but you know, Professor Arun, maybe you may want to help us with an answer. I think I, 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 I'll, I'll answer it. I mean, so I, I work a lot with the government, right? More than, uh, I mean, you, you talked about how much I work with the industry, but I actually worked a lot. I mean, uh, I participate in a lot of programs with the Niti, uh, Niti Aayog and with a bunch of other government bodies. And I know that the government is also very hungry for people with data science expertise. In fact, uh, with Niti, we are working on this program where more and more of the government data is going to become available, not just available online, but available in a form in which you can do analytics on. Right, so where we can run data science algorithms on the government data, it's going to become available on, 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 on the web in a queryable format. So and uh, so and they are very keen on you know more and more expertise in this. In fact, the Robert Bosch Center uh, has a training program specifically for certain government departments, right? So in fact, we take we we do this annual program for the naval officers, and we do a quarterly program for people from the Ministry of Statistics. So there is a lot of hunger for uh, people with data science and uh, uh, AI qualification in the government. So yes, we can look for a government job. But of course, the getting into the government is a different thing. Jobs exist, but don't ask me how do I get them. Absolutely. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, if I can take the example, I mean, we run uh, our other data science programs, etc. This is the first time that we're doing for this with IIT Madras, but from the other programs which we run, we always get people from, you know, various government departments who are a part of uh, the program. So that's something that the government is actually actively looking at. Um, this is a question. The next question is something that, you know, I'll take up, you know, how much package can we expect initially after the course? Uh, this is from Abish. Uh, Abish, if you really look at it, there isn't any answer, right? If somebody is saying that you will get X package, etc., I would request that you take that with a big pinch of salt. A couple of reasons for that is the fact that, you know, we don't know. I mean, your situation, if I, both of us are sitting in the same interview, how I perform versus how you perform, you may perform brilliantly. You can get probably double the salary that I will be able to get, right? So that's one. The other part is that most people, when I talk to them, everybody only talks about the package that I will get. Nobody focuses on the skills part of it. The package is a result of your skills and your ability to kind of showcase that skill in an interview panel, right? In, in the interview and after you get through uh, the interview in your real life. And that's what the professors were also talking about. So you should not look at, look at gaining the skill, the, the package will follow most cases. So it's very difficult to answer the question. Uh, but yes, what we would like to do is Talent Sprint um, has a very vibrant placement engine that's there. Um, and uh, every month we have, we have huge demand from companies, top companies who want people to be placed, who want you know, people with talent, actually. And that's what the industry wants. They want people who can come in and deliver. So that demand is there. If you can fulfill that, uh, you will get uh, a very competitive, uh, let's not put it, you will get something which is more than competitive in the market. Most cases, what people focus on is how much is the package. Now, even if I were to get a very fancy package, 
there is no guarantee nobody can guarantee on this earth that you will get the same thing so my focus would mostly be on building the skills the package is a function that will follow even if you were to get uh, a degree and you know i tell this i have uh, before you know i joined talent sprint i used to head admissions for indian school of business uh, one of the best b schools in the world uh, it it's the same thing people would always focus on you know ask me whether i do this the simple answer is that you can probably pass out from the best university in the world but if you don't have the skills you will if you may land up a job you will not be able to hold on to it so Re the response to all the questions when it comes to you know what is the package what is there i think there are a few questions that have come in would be this uh, concentrate on the skills if you have that you know package is not going to be a constraint we have so many cases i think you can even come up uh, if you see the talent sprint page um, if you follow us on linkedin you will look at the kind of offers that people get so that's just that's not an advertisement of the fact that you will get this if you do the program a lot of what you get depends on you know what you do how much you learn etc cetera, etc cetera. but the system at the back end the, the placement engine is well geared up to support uh, people who have the requisite skills um we'll go on to the next question um this is from partha you know will we get the basics of the tools we are going to use like python tableau r etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, professors perhaps you may want to uh, answer this Sure. So, so the bridge module uh, that will happen, that Talent Sprint will uh, have, will take care of, uh, will cover a bit of uh, programming, right? So, for people who are not so much uh, equipped with programming, um, uh, probably things like Python, uh, maybe Google Collab, and things like that, perhaps will be covered in that, right? So, yes. if that is what the question is about, then yes. So, you will you you'll understand the basics of uh, programming, but this is not a programming course, right? So. Um, so it is only to bring you to a level such that so that you can follow the rest of the course. Yeah. Right. Um, just adding to what uh, Professor Arun said, uh, the bridge module will cover two aspects. One is the basic mathematical concepts that you need to do because there's something that you know you'll need to understand to be able to get value out of the program, as well as Python and the other tools that you would need. It'll be a refresher on these. Um, most of the people, whoever is coming in will be knowing some kind of programming language etc and we'll kind of you know python is easy to learn that way uh, so you be what we'll be doing is we'll be covering uh, uh, you know we'll be spending a couple of weeks trying to give you all of that and even before uh, the the actual live sessions begin uh, for the bridge module you will have two weeks of uh, self reading material which is there which will cover all of these aspects uh, where you will be able to brush up and then come into uh, the live sessions and then the modules one to six that you know we showed here in the presentation, uh, they will start from uh, the faculty of IIT Madras. And as a part of, uh, I think one of the things that he's trying to ask is, you know, the kind of tools that we are going to be using uh, during the program itself. So uh, I think that's what uh, you know is is the is the question import of the question. If I've got it right, professor. Yeah. So. For example, uh, so there are several, so when you say tools, right, so there are a lot of these, um, you know, packages for, uh, for, for instance, deep learning based uh, packages, which are, uh, which people use a lot. Um, so some of these you will be introduced in during the deep learning module itself, right, so, uh, but it's not going to be exhaustive in any sense, right, so we are going to, uh, we'll perhaps talk about um, the important packages that people typically use to run these deep learning algorithms, where you'll also get a chance to uh, play around with uh, these packages, uh, but there are like a laundry list of packages available out there, right? So, and we it is it's hard to cover all of them, uh, but then enough will be covered so that you will be equipped to you know play around and run these algorithms yourself. Absolutely. Um, so let's get on to the next question. This is again a question from Adi. You know. Uh, do we cover only fundamentals or will we cover stuff which is a little more than fundamentals intermediate levels though uh, i don't know what uh, what is the definition of intermediate level here but maybe professors one of you may want to uh, take a crack at this okay so uh, when you say fundamentals uh, so there are so again uh, the module uh, Two uh, or yeah, the module two, which was the fundamentals, so rather module three, which was the fundamental algorithms in machine learning, uh, 
Um, so they are classical machine learning algorithms, right? So uh, whereas if you look at module four, um, yeah, module four, which is the deep learning foundations and algorithms. So most of these algorithms, in, in some sense, a lot of these algorithms are being developed as we speak, right? So there are, uh, there are new architectures in deep learning that come up. I mean, you have around 4,000, 5,000 papers every year being published in deep learning. Right, so the goal is to you know cover the state of the art algorithms which people uh, use today. Right, so in that sense, these will be state of the art. If that is what you mean by intermediate level, yes. So we will cover cutting edge uh, deep learning algorithms. Yes. Okay. Right. Thank you. So let's go on to the next question. This is okay about placements again. Uh, okay. One other clarification that I would like to give is placements will be offered to people who have uh, up to five years of work experience. People above that will not be a part of uh, the placement engine, the direct placement engine that is there. Though we have, you also have a, a very you know wide. Uh, set of, you know, we will be able to connect with all of our alumni across all of our partner institutions. There are lots of offers, um, you know, and job offers that are put up as a part of uh, that alumni portal. Yeah, if you have more than, uh, you know, more than five years of experience, you'll be able to uh, be a part of that. Uh, many a times what has happened is people have also collaborated uh, between class, uh, you know, in the class itself, people have collaborated. We've had so many cases of startups forming. Uh, we've had so many cases of people hiring one of their classmates, etc., in a position in their company. All of that keeps happening. I'm hoping that all of that will continue to happen, but the placement support per se, which we are talking about in the program on the program page. If you look at it, that will be available to people with one to five years of experience or you know, zero to five years of experience, so to speak, up to five years, you will be a part of that. Other than that, you'll, you'll be able to be a part of some of the prep sessions that we do. Uh, there are so many other industry connect sessions that keep happening, uh, you know, every month they happen. You'll be able to you know, join all of those sessions. But placements will be uh, you know, restricted to people with uh, five years of experience. Um, Rakesh, if, um, okay, if you're not able to complete the course at the given period of time, um, I'm guessing, you know, most people will be able to, you know, do that. Um, if you're not able to do it, you can, you know, there are various, the, the, the sessions will all be live sessions, but you will have, uh, you know, the videos that you will be able to refer to, etc. 12 months is a long enough period. You know, most of our programs are six months long. So I don't think you should have too much of a trouble uh, in completing the program. Uh, okay, Adi has asking, uh, you know, first batch, what is the what are the aspects that have been taken to ensure that the program is successful i believe we covered some of that you know the very fact that you know we'll we'll uh, you know look at the class um, and we'll we'll try and get the, the faculty mentioned you know we'll try and get people with the relevant expertise uh, from the industry to come and uh, you know join in uh, there are various other things that happen as a part of the program which you know some things like office you know we, we could have office hours with the faculty uh, we have uh, mentors which who are available who could help you out with that uh, as well so a lot of these aspects the the entire bridge module itself uh, you know was put up because we want people to at least have the basics in place before they come into the program so uh, and and you know let's i i, I mean i'm completely discount not discounting the fact that you know both the professors and everybody involved in the program have had many years of experience uh, of teaching students. So you can be rest assured uh, that, uh, you know, the, 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 your success is something which is paramount in this program and we'll take all efforts um, to, to make that happen. Um, professors, if you would want to add to uh, anything that I said. I mean, I guess you covered it pretty well. So I, I don't have anything specific to add. Sure. No so I, I, I mean, just to you know, kind of, uh, you know, we keep teaching new new courses almost on a regular basis at ITF. It's so something that you know we are used to thinking about all the time, right? So we will, uh, what are the bases that we will cover and so on, so forth. Right? And so, yeah, so, I mean, I just echo what our editor said. So, uh, we have your back. Don't worry. 
Absolutely. Thank you. So again, this is a question from Karthik. You know, what percentage of the class will be theory and what percentage will be practical deployment? Um, a very pointed question, Professor Arun, probably you may want to um, help us with an answer. So, so again, uh, if you looked at those uh, six uh, modules that were shown earlier, right? So two are kind of uh, dedicatedly for uh, real world use case and so on. Um, so I, if I am not wrong, out of the around 200 hours of the entire course, um, around 75 to 80 hours will be covered in these two modules, which is like more than one third, right? So, so you can think of it as, um, yeah, so that, that is the amount of time we'll spend only talking about, you know, use cases, research challenges, and so on. People from industry and also people, um, the faculty here will talk about that. Um, of course, you cannot make it like 60, 40, right? So because the foundation is, is equally important, right? So otherwise, um, I mean, <laughs> you cannot build the palace without the foundation. So you, that, that, is, that is also important. So we'll spend enough time on that as well. Right? So I would say something like um, uh, 60, 40, where 60 is these algorithmic aspects and 40 is like real world use cases. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, we'll, in the interest of time, we'll go on to the next question. Okay, I'm not covering questions like, you know, you're a mechatronics pressure or if it's something very close to, you know, your profile that you do. Uh, you, can, you can call up Harika uh, or you can write to us. We'll be happy to do a one-on-one -on -one counseling in the interest of time. Um, so, Okay, this is a very favorite question. I was expecting why had this not come in. Um, how many hours will it require per week? Um, and how is it different from the online BSc degree program, which is offered by IIT Madras? Uh, okay, so the online uh, BSc program is, the focus there is uh, different. So it's like, first of all, it's like a, a BSc, right? As the name suggests, it's a BSc level, bachelor's uh, level program. It is for people. So anybody who has finished a, a if I'm not wrong, um, a 10th standard or plus two can potentially apply to that program. Um, and plus, not plus, not 10. Not 10, 12, right? So anybody with that uh, profile can actually apply for that program. Um, and the goal there is to do it at like a very undergrad level, right? So whereas this is at a PG level kind of program and there is no real industry focus in the online BSc program. So it is, it, it, I mean, there is no, as far as I understand, there is no dedicated industry use case or people from industry coming and really speaking about their challenges in the industry and so on. Maybe Ravi, you had something? Oh, yeah. So I, I mean, so in fact, both of us have been involved in forming the curriculum for online BAC program as well. And I've been sadly in pushing the agenda, right? So the, there, the goal is, it is the first degree, right? It's an undergraduate degree. You, know, there are, you teach things like English also. In that, right? that is a program course on that. It's, it's really a full-fledged three-year degree that you have to do. Right? It's not like a, you know, a weekend program where you have so much more uh, uh, you know, interaction with the faculty that you have here. Right? So that the faculty who have lectures and then you have mentors who, who you talk to. The class sizes are much, much larger. Right? But the goal is very different. The goal is to basically equip you with an undergraduate degree. So there are so much more that you would learn. Right? So you would learn basic fundamentals of programming. If you're, remember, you're coming from a 12th standard background. So you learn things like data structures and algorithms. You learn multiple uh, you know, fundamentals of databases. So it's not just a machine learning program, not just an applied data science program. So the scope is very different from the online BAC program. And like Arun was saying that, yeah, because the scope is so much more fundamental, teaching you uh, literally the basics. That means a lot of you learn a lot of basic math, right? Which uh, we, won't, we won't get into that much uh, gory detail in this program, right? And uh, so it's meant for a very different audience. So that is... Uh, okay. Absolutely. And, and in terms of uh, the, the hours over the weekend for this program, uh, how, on an average, we are talking about, what, uh, 10 hours in a weekend in terms of classes and other activities related to the class. Uh, can you just throw some light around that? Yeah, so uh, 8 to 10 hours is what uh, we are thinking uh, over the weekend. Um, so, so if it is, uh, yeah, so these would include, you know, the live lectures, the perhaps the interactions, and in some cases it could be, um, uh, you know, um, 
group reading sessions and so on. So depending on how the program, I mean, how the faculty also design the program and so on, right? So, um, so I would say eight to 10 hours uh, over the weekend uh, for 12 months, right? So that, that, that is the expectation. Right. Um, and, and just to add to what the professor said, now in our experience of running all of these, uh, the eight to 10 that we are talking about are you know, basic classroom activities. Now, other than that, I would also request everybody to spend uh, you know, and, and the amount of time that you'll need to spend depends on, you know, how much you are prepared, etc. But I have seen um, in many cases, we have seen that, you know, people spend um, on an average of, you know, eight, 10 more hours, depending on what they want to do to brush up the concepts, etc, etc. So, you know, for these next 12 months, uh, you may have to budget for some more time over the week as well. Um, and it totally depends on the strategy that you have of learning, you know, so I have seen some people's spend two hours in a day, some people spend, uh, you know, one whole Saturday morning or some Saturday evening, something like that, to kind of go through the concepts, brush up, go through all of that. So that's the kind of, you know, time commitments that we are asking. But then if you really look at it, it's, it's something that, you know, thousands of other professionals are doing as a part of it. It is not something that will interfere too much uh, with or it will interfere in any way with you know your work commitments etc you also get a lot of these questions i have a lot of work commitments i can't do that uh, you know these are programs which are designed for working professionals um, and the load will be kept in mind uh, while you know while you are asked to uh, undergo this program uh, one other question that we get is you know some books that are reflecting of the curriculum standard i think um, you know karthik um, as asking this question. So professors, would you want to recommend any books that people uh, can uh, you know, refer to as a part of the program? Okay, so the, the, okay, so the different uh, people teaching this program, right? So they would have their own focused books which might be relevant to that part of the course that they are teaching. Uh, overall, some of the, so this is from a, like a pure machine learning point of view, right? So some of the books which are, which are excellent uh, for machine learning and deep learning, um, or I would say the book uh, Pattern Recognition and Machine Learning uh, by Christopher Bishop, it's, a, it's like a classic book on machine learning. Um, there's a book on deep learning by uh, Ian Goodfellow, which is another classic book on uh, deep learning. So these are like fundamental books, but um, so what I want to stress is that uh, this is not like a, only a bookish course, right? So, so it is much more beyond what the textbook is going to offer, right? So in terms of, as, I, as we have been talking, the uh, making you industry ready, the books are important. Uh, I have no second thoughts about that. Um, but then the course is much more beyond the books also. Absolutely. Um, so there's, okay, so there's a question from Gurneet. Will we be using cloud platforms like Azure for uh, deployment? Uh, okay, when you say deployment, uh, what do you mean? I, I think uh, what what is some this? more like for the hands-on exercises. What we will be using? Perhaps uh, we'll be using uh, something like uh, Google Collab or Collab, yeah. That's Collab is something which is yeah mostly used for most of uh, the other programs as well. Yeah. So we have all, I've already covered questions on placements, admissions, application dates. Admissions are still open, by the way, you know, you can reach out to uh, Harika for, uh, you know, details about that. We have the last few seats available. Uh, you can look at that. Placements is something that we have covered as a part of the answers. Um, I want to pursue a master's in data science, AI in agriculture. Can I get an admission? Uh, if you fulfill the admission criteria, uh, you can get in. Will it help me skip the master's degree? I would probably, if you want to do a master's, this will probably give you some added advantage. This is not equal to a master's degree. Um, so, uh, you know, you may still need to do that if it's something that you want to pursue. Uh, okay. Alicia, regarding coursework, will we not have any communication with the professors? Of course, you will be having communication with the professors. Professors, maybe you may want to answer that. Uh, so the question is regarding the coursework also, will we not have any communication with the professors? No, no, I think that question came uh, when you mentioned that um, all communications have to go via talent sprint. I think oh. that was the confusion. Uh, so yeah, when the, once the course starts, you will be interacting with the professors and uh, yeah, so, uh, so, so then uh, there will be 
uh, potential, uh, I mean, dedicated office hours of the, for the instructors where you can, in, um, you, I mean, maybe you can fix an appointment and then interact with the uh, faculty one on one where you can get some of your questions clarified. So there will be interaction, right? So, um, yes. Uh, but right. yeah, generally, what usually happens is, and let me clarify the, 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 the cohort level announcements which are made, even if professors were to make it, uh, they usually will be routed through the LMS which again, uh, and, and emails which will come, they will obviously not come from the professor's email IDs directly. They will be routed through talent sprint. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, uh, okay, so the uh, Alisha wants to also work in research in an in interesting research area at Robert Bosch Center, etc. Could this program help in any way? Uh, I mean, professors, any of you can probably answer. I mean, absolutely. I think uh, we might have more to say, but I think uh, Robert Bosch Center uh, self has. I mean, there are lots of interesting opportunities open for uh, you know uh, uh, people who are with a bachelor's degree, people with master's degree. So, 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 yeah. I, I mean, I'll 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 actually add to that. Right? So, uh, so I mean, like Arun was pointing out, there are a lot of opportunities that are open at the center, right? So we are not. Uh, let me say that we will not be giving any special opportunities for people who are going through this program, but any of our programs at the center has a very rigorous selection process, right? So you have to know how to write uh, programs. So we have a programming, uh, uh, a couple of programming rounds, and then we have a technical interview round, and then uh, you're shortlisted for it. And then you have interaction with faculty before you actually get into the, any, any of the positions, right? And Certainly doing this program will help you go through both the programming rounds and the technical interview rounds. Easily. Right? It certainly prepare you for uh, you know, getting through those rounds. In fact, we get thousands of applications every, every year for various positions at the center. And we end up shortlisting maybe 10 or 12 people even to interview, right? maybe per, per, per quarter. Right? So maybe 10 people per quarter is what we end up interviewing. So for you to get through that hard bar, this course will certainly be open. Yeah, so maybe if we can add, right, so this, the, the goal of this course is to make you industry ready, right, so which means it will also make you, let's say, RBC decide ready, but that does not mean you have a guarantee to get into RBC design, right, so you'll go through the process, but then it will make you ready. Yes. Absolutely. Um, so this is, again, this is a, a question from AK, you know, we won't be actually receiving a certificate from IIT Madras. Professors, you may want to just talk about it. This will be from the Center for Continuing Education um, at IIT Madras, right? So I, I wanted to get back to that. Uh, I, I noticed that question. I think it came up because you said the certificate will come from the Robert Bott Center. Uh, right. I think right, immediately after that, that question popped up. So no, the certificate will come from uh, the Continuing Education Center of IIT Madras, right? So it's not a degree program of IIT Madras. It is more like a continuing ed program. So the certificate will come from the continuing education uh, and talent sprint jointly, right? And right. it'll also be mentioned that the program was coordinated uh, with the Robert Watt Center. So all of this will be mentioned on the certificate, but the uh, issuing authority, quote unquote, the issuing authority will be the continuing education center at IIT Madras and talent sprint. Absolutely. Thank you for the clarification. So I think we'll, we'll take, uh, you know, there's a related question. What's the role of Talent Sprint? Uh, well, the, the platform that will be used to teach this program uh, is something that will be provided by Talent Sprint. Talent Sprint, NSC Talent Sprint, we are a part of the National Stock Exchange, uh, is, uh, is going to be providing that. We are also responsible for doing all of the, uh, you know, the marketing of the program, the admissions part of things. And we'll also be teaching the bridge module of the program. Uh, so that's where, plus uh, a lot of the support in terms of, you know, uh, you know some uh, mentors, etc., are things that Talent Sprint will be providing. Uh, the course content uh, has been designed by, uh, you know, the professors. Uh, they will be teaching uh, the, the, the main portions of the program. They will be teaching all the assessments will be conducted uh, by them using the platform that we have. So that's that's what is there in terms of, uh, you know, does every course on Talent Sprint have placement assistance by Talent Sprint? Uh, depends on the program that you are doing. For programs where it's available, it's clearly mentioned. Where it's not mentioned, it's not available. You can go to talentsprint.com and check uh, the information uh, for that. Uh, uh, ample professional collaboration with... Uh, okay, there was another... Uh, 
question uh, which talked about whether you will be able to connect with the professors or not and will they be providing any support after the program is done uh, and i'm answering this you know before they answer that usually uh, no but uh, uh, we are aware of many cases where people have collaborated uh, with faculty after they have passed out of the program if you have uh, you know if you have um, converging areas of interest etc maybe you know some of you go and join get into robert Bosch center etc you'll be able to do that but as a regular part of the program you will not be able to uh, having said that uh, there are lots of uh, you know events that we do as a part of um, for our alumni network um, so a lot of help is available over there and you are also a part of a very large alumni network of talent sprint uh, which has people from you know say fintech to 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 artificial intelligence data science machine learning etc cetera, etc cetera. so if you need something if you post it on those forums i'm sure uh, you know people who have experience will be happy to help you out uh, Okay, I'm just going through the questions. The best way to reach out, I think the best way to reach out those kind of questions are kind of covered. Uh, academic journey through the course is something that we have been covering as a part of this total duration of the course. It's 12 months. Uh, it's 12 months long. Classes are going to be starting, um, you know, from uh, the platform access will be available from uh, the next couple of days. So I mean, many people, if you are already there, I'm sure you have already received your platform access um, and classes are going to start, uh, you know, from the first week, post the first week of October, live classes. So that's there. Uh, the cost of the program, well, uh, it's it's three lakh rupees. Uh, there are scholarships available for various categories. Uh, you know, if if uh, if you fulfill any of those categories, you have scholarships up to thirty percent available on that cost. Um, it's three lakhs plus GST, and then you know, uh, whatever scholarships are available. What is the batch size being planned? Uh, okay, Roshan, uh, the batch size currently that we are looking at is um, about fifty people right now, uh, and the sessions the uh, the professors will be able to handle questions for a big batch size. So professors, maybe you may you may want to talk a little bit about uh, you know this question. The uh, the Roshan wants to know how will we be able to if if we have a large batch etc. Which is not the case this time. Uh, you know how do we how will we be able to handle questions etc. I'll probably add. Uh, from the platform capability, what's available, but you know, we would want you to probably talk a little bit about that. I mean, so the typical batch size of a machine learning course, even in even at IIT Madras, is hundred plus, right? So, so we are used to teaching uh, large batch sizes, uh, so to say. Um, so, fifty is, is relatively a smaller batch size, uh, I would think. Um, so, so. If, if the question is about, will I get time to you know, interact with the faculty? Will I have my doubts and questions solved? So I think there are two parts, right? So one is the platform itself. Uh, I think uh, I'll throw my uh, add more. Right. Right. So the platform itself will have capabilities which will make this process easier. Um, and of course, uh, we have these office hours and other things which will also help you to interact with the faculty, right? So. Um, I, I don't think there will be a point where you will feel that you have questions which go unanswered, right? So Absolutely. I don't think that will happen at all. Yeah. So in terms of the platform, if you look at it, these will be live classes that you will be doing. So it's just like, you know, we are having an interaction, we are answering questions here and a discussion. Uh, you will be able to see the, you know, whiteboards, whatever the professors have as class notes will be available on the LMS. Uh, you can access that at any point in time. After the session is over, uh, you will be able to, there is an AI index video that will be available. So if at any point in time, they are talking about uh, convolutional neural network at some point in time, you will actually be able to go through the index in the video, click on the CNN, and you can jump to that part of the lecture directly. Uh, the platform also has, uh, uh, what do we call as a breakout room, so to speak. So in, in case what we are doing is in a class of say 50, um, there are group exercises that are happening and you have five groups of 10 people each, for example, we can actually break up 
all of these five groups into separate rooms um, and the faculty can get into each room and you know discuss with people you guys can work separately it's it's just like being in a physical class but from the comfort of your own home so all of these things are available you have uh, what is called uh, a lounge which is which is which is something that is always available so students can come in uh, you know that and that's outside of predefined class hours you can have a group discussion over there uh, professor was talking about uh, you know office hours with the professor so that entire schedule of their availability will be published every month uh, you can book an office hours which will be a one on one or a group to one a session with the professors get your questions doubts clarified there are discussion forums that are there where you can you know post questions your cohort can help you um, etc so these are all things which are possible which the platform suggests um, supports very natively um, and it's been a very seamless experience uh, just to you know give you uh, some more comfort the same platform is used being used by iim calcutta to run their main mba program so the entire two year mba program in the last two years or one and a half years since the pandemic has started um, has been running on this platform so all courses which is which is couple of you know thousand students are almost close to a thousand students are doing this there's been no issue uh, that we have even iit uh, you know iit jammu has used the same platform which will be used to deliver this uh, to deliver their um, engineering programs so i hope that will clarify uh, the capabilities of the platform and and your ability uh, to gain uh, from that um, in the dl module okay sorry i think we've crossed the time i did realize that my apologies for that professors uh, we can wrap it up in the next 4 minutes 5 minutes if that's okay sure yeah sure so sorry about that i didn't realize i passed by uh, so in the dl module we uh, will we be implementing the algorithms from scratch after reading the related research paper or will we be using implemented packages this is a question from gurneet okay so uh, so to implement the algorithm from scratch typically in a dl uh, framework right so so you would need humongous amounts of data right so there are often these pre trained models which are available which you will use uh, and to develop your own uh, your own algorithms for your own problems of interest right so it's not uh, so it is not even advisable to do in dl everything from scratch so but then you would understand how to build things from scratch right so but then for the purposes of uh, uh, trying to implement it for for a particular problem of interest uh, you would use a lot of available packages also right so you will you will be of course writing your own code but then you will also use some of these existing packages it will be a mix of both absolutely um thank you so we we'll take up the last couple of questions okay there's a question on campus visit well uh, there are campus visits which are planned as a part of the program but uh, that is subject to covid etc maybe professor you may want to you know take a crack at that i'll, yeah. I'll take a stab at it that so in fact our our campus is not even welcoming our regular students back yet right so uh, so there is a lot of uh, quarantine constraints if students want to come back they have to do a 14 day quarantine before they can you know resume normal activity and things like that so hopefully somewhere around um, as the uh, the program progresses uh, restrictions will ease up and so subject to the uh, situation covid conditions and the government directives because we are a central government uh, organization right so we have to follow everything the government says uh, uh, and uh, so it depends how much very much on how the condition evolves yeah. so right now i can't guarantee when we will Yes, in fact, I really would love to see students back on campus, but that's uh, yeah. So we don't know when that's going to happen. Absolutely. Um, so I think yeah, we've answered most of the question. Uh, you know, networking group, etc. Well, the world is very network place. I'm sure. Uh, you know, if you want to connect with people, uh, I don't want to put in ideas here, but in most of the programs, I am aware of Slack groups. etc etc i'm aware of whatsapp groups that are there these are some things which are led by students i'm sure all of you will form that uh, as a part of the group if the professors want to be a part of that i'm aware of many programs where they are 
I'm aware of many programs where they are not. So it's it's all left to students. Uh, how much you want to interact with the professors, I'm sure they would love to do that. Um, so that's all. I think we have overshot our time uh, by 20 minutes. Uh, thank you so much uh, for spending time over here. And it, it was a lot of information that we got uh, from you from in terms of the program, what we are planning to do. Um, and I really thank both of you, uh, both Professor Arun as well as Professor Ravi uh, for, you know, spending this time and, you know, talking to some of the students. I know I see many of their names uh, already there and many people I'm sure are interested in case you want to join this program. Uh, we have some seats available, but uh, you'll have to work fast. Uh, dates um, are closing very soon. Uh, contact Harika. I'm sure um, she'll be very happy to help you with the process. Um, and uh, thank you again. I hope all of you stay safe. We look forward to seeing most of you in uh, the class, which is or in the sessions which are coming up very soon. Uh, thank you both professors for spending time with us. I know both of you are very busy. We really appreciate the time that you spent. Thanks. It was a great session. Thanks. Sir. Yeah. Thank you, Rizwa. It's, it's, it's great. And I'm really looking forward to the start of the program. Thank you so much. All the best. Have a good night.